Jade. I'm John, and today we'll be following al Levi along as he builds a Go Build a Dead Wheel. Hello, Levi. Would you please kick us off? Yeah, so today I'll be golden be building a Go Build a Dead Wheel. That's the box. So jumping right in, first what you're going to do is you're going to grab one of your one of your short screws, <laughs> and then going on to putting putting this in through like that. Grabbing your spring and putting a nut on the end. Then tighten it up just enough so that. Yeah, there we go. I'm going to tighten it just enough so that the screw can still move. I mean the spring, oh, I mean the spring can yeah. still move, sorry. So you see we've tightened it up and the spring will still move. Once we've done that, we can go ahead and take our two bearings. Put them on the side so that the flange is on the outside. Once we've done that, we can go uh, into uh, your to the bottom of your robot. This will be the two holes that we'll be using. Pause now if you need. The what you're gonna do is you're gonna grab your long screw, put it through the top hole. Use your use your long spacer. Put it over top and put the spring on. This is a, this is part of this, this, this. And put a nut over it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Again, we're going to tighten it just enough so that the spring can move. While you're doing this, I do have two questions. First of all, why have you pre-selected this spot on the U channel, and what if it's different for other people? Because uh, most U channel is the same, and everyone will be getting the same parts in their blocks. This is what the Go Build a website recommends we do, and in our experience, it is working really well. And my, for my second question is, why would you want to use one of these on your robot? It so during autonomous, it can help to improve accuracy with a program called Roadrunner. Here's Kellen to explain more. My name's Kellen. Today, I'm going to be talking to you about our dead wheels. Our dead wheels are super useful because instead of time, our dead wheels adjust to the different field conditions and are super accurate. What happened uh, last year is that we actually got crashed into by another robot, but our dead wheels actually adjusted that and still made our auto work. Okay, thanks, Callan. Anyway, continuing on, we're, once our, we have our two bearings in here, right? We're going to put our uh, hex shaft in so that the flange is on the silver side. Put that through. On the other side, grab our spacer and put it in. So this step is quite tricky, so Got to shove it through the side here, and so it's in. Mine is a little bit bent inwards. Oh crap! Oh, no. <laughs> Got it out. Oh, All right, with the spacer. In. There you go. But so we need the spacer now. Oh no! Make sure your spacer doesn't fall out. It's important. You put it in. I'll. Okay, there we go. There okay, we it's go. In. So you're gonna look for it. the markings. Kind of fade away, faded away. But once we're in there. We can get our screws, our two remaining screws, put them in, the other side, and tighten them up. Since there's bearings, it doesn't really matter how tight these are, but so that it doesn't fall out, we recommend that they're fairly tight. Tighten your screws up. You can go ahead and okay. So normally your U channel would be one hole longer, right? So what you do is you go like this, plug your cord in, and you would put it through the hole right here. 
It's not here on this piece because it's too short. Gobilda suggests that we use a grommet here so that the wire doesn't get frayed. So if you have an extra one of those, it would be useful. But that is how you build a Gobilda dead wheel. Now, one last thing. I have noticed that as you're building, the spring made it push down. Why would you want the spring on that? So your robot has, since it, it's, it's a bad idea to keep the dead wheels in one spot. Because if they're too low, then your wheels won't contact the ground. And if it's too high, then your dead wheels might not contact the ground. But with a spring, it gives you a variable height, so that no matter what your wheel height is, it will always contact the ground with enough force so that it, it rotates would on that, the fields. Would that also mean that if the robot were to go over uneven ground, it could, it could fall along that ground? Exactly, John. Thank you. Okay. And so that has been how to build a Go Build a Dead Wheel. Remember to like and subscribe, hit that bell if you want more.